Is Zoro the best swordsman in Jump Force? I am kind of torn between him and Ichigo. Rukia is also very good, but I think the title of best swordsman really stands between Ichigo and Zoro. Let me know your opinion in the comments down below. We've already done a breakdown for Ichigo, now let's do one for Zoro, and I'd love to know which one you guys think it's better. Let's go. Alright, Zoro has a sword. Three swords, in fact. So, he is a swordsman, something I think we've established at this point. But what does that mean in Jump Force? It means that his normal attacks are gonna have some decent range at the very least, and also Zoro is a fast character. So, in a way, very similar to Ichigo as far as playstyle goes, at least when looking at his normal attacks. He's fast, decent range, and the combos just feel really, really good, because swords. Yeah, no bias here whatsoever. But when we move on to his special attacks, I'm going to start complaining right away. Zoro has all of his buttons swapped for no good reason. Projectiles are usually on the heavy attack button. On Zoro, it's the light attack button. The special attack that eats two bars of meter is usually on the grab. On Zoro, it's the heavy attack button. Why? With Zoro, you just take all those previous misconceptions and throw them out the window for no good reason. I don't understand why Zoro's buttons are swapped, but <sighs> okay, let's let's talk about his specials. All right, first we have the 1080 pound Phoenix. The description says, use a slash attack to inflict damage, which is really not helpful at all. Here's a better description for you. It's a projectile. <sighs> fixed. That's right, it is a cross-shaped projectile, and if you watch the Ichigo breakdown, you're already drawing comparisons, because Ichigo also has a cross-shaped projectile. This one is faster than Ichigo's, but on the other hand, you cannot do it in the air. So I don't know which one is better, to be honest. One is faster, the other one can be done aerial. So I don't know, there's advantages and disadvantages for each one of them. As far as projectiles go, this one has a pretty normal range, nothing remarkable, but hey, projectiles always come in handy. The next special we have is the one sword style EI Death Lion Song. And the description says that it's a grab, so we're gonna believe the description because I actually never saw anyone block this. It sounds legit. If you land a grab, this whole animation plays out, and if you let your opponent land after the animation, you can continue the combo from there. You can even combo into this grab if you have some finesse. It's a very powerful attack, but it does cost two bars of meter. And I know, it looks like Ichigo's move, doesn't it? Well, Ichigo's move is more of a charge with a very long range, but it's a normal attack it can be blocked this one is unblockable but on the other hand the range is really short so even though they both have this big animation playing out and this animation takes the opponent into the air both of the attacks will seem kind of similar but in reality the activation is very very different and personally i prefer ichigo's next up zoro's final special attack is the 3000 worlds attack from where you stand to inflict damage says the description which doesn't say much so i'm gonna complete this description by saying this move is not a parry, but I kind of always used it as a parry. Let me explain. So the first thing Zoro does with his special move is spin his swords like this. Then he has this little dash forward, and if he connects with the opponent, there's this delayed slice animation that looks really cool. Now, I use it like a parry because if someone walks into my spinning swords, they're gonna take this attack in the face. So in a way, it works like a parry. But it is not a true parry because Zoro takes a few frames of animation to start spinning the swords. And if you're attacked during those startup frames, your attack will be interrupted. Which usually does not happen with a parry. So yeah, it seems worse than a parry, but I actually like this ability better than your traditional parry. Because for a parry, if the opponent doesn't attack you, they can just punish you afterwards after the parry animation is over. With this attack, Zoro will attack the enemy whether he parries an attack or not. He just attacks anyway. Sure, the attack is blockable and punishable afterwards, but I feel like I have more options if I misread my opponent or mistimed my ability with Zoro's ability than with a normal parry. And those are Zoro's specials, and as you can see, I like both Zoro and Ichigo's projectiles pretty much the same, I like Ichigo's charging attack better than Zoro, and I like Zoro's kind of parry better than Ichigo's parry. I don't know who's the best swordsman, you tell me who you think it is in the comments. And to help you decide, here is his ultimate, which will work very similar to other ultimates in the game, including Ichigo's. It's the billionfold world tri It's the billionfold world tri cosm It's the billionfold world tri tri -kili it's the it's the billion fold world trikillion cosm. It's the billion fold world trikillion cosm. Woo! Ha! 
It's a lot easier to do this ultimate than it is to say it. The description says that you dash towards your opponent and inflict damage upon impact. And that's exactly what Zoro does. Dashes, attacks, initiates this whole animation, deals a ton of damage. As far as Awakening goes, Zoro just enters a stronger state. There's no unique transformation or anything. It's sort of a generic Awakening that so many other characters have. Or at least that's the way it was during the closed beta, during which apparently true Awakenings were completely disabled. So we couldn't even see what lies beyond that simple powered up state. And that's pretty much Zoro in a nutshell. Projectiles from a distance because he doesn't have that many tools from range. All of his attacks only work from pretty close but he does have a projectile to contest enemies if he needs to. And then from close range the swords just give him the edge. And his two special attacks are incredibly powerful. A special grab for two bars of meter that you can combo from is very powerful indeed. And a parry that's not really a parry, but in my book, it's even better than a parry special move. I love my time with Zoro, and hopefully now you have a better understanding of how this character works. If this video helped you, make sure to let me know in the comments. And for the love of God, who is the better swordsman? I haven't been able to sleep in weeks. I need an answer. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.